CSR is not limited to only uh, you know donations. CSR can be very interesting, can be very wide. Now, the challenges lie in allocating time and resources which are required to develop the CSR approach which meets the government and social standards. Now, here comes the role of company secretary. We have to give positive you know, feedback to the management about what CSR is, how we, must, we, we can contribute and how we must contribute. So one, the role of profit, of course the competitive advantage and the lot of focus is something which is becoming detrimental to the growth uh, of CSR in various organizations and these are the challenges which we have to handle and of course whether it is lasting, whether the impact remains, that is something all of us have to monitor. Now, I, I, I share with you a quote of uh, Albert Einstein and he says, not everything that can be counted counts and not everything that counts can be counted. This has a very deep meaning because sometimes we, we get too much engrossed in the number game. We get too much engrossed in you know, how to make money, how to make profit and we forget the other aspects which are there around us. So I think it is an opportunity for uh, the corporate managers to actually do something positive for the society and of course the regulation is supporting us to do that. Now let us look at what are the provisions in the company's bill uh, and the company's act now uh, which is relating to CSR. Now, it has been first time recognized, so we have to do a lot of uh, education, education of self first, then educate your management, then educate the people who are going to be involved in CSR. Because we just not force people to do CSR activities. No? You have to actually educate them to do it and motivate them to do this activity. Now, as for clause 135, the CSR concept has been introduced. Now, chapter 9 talks about it and it deals with corporate social responsibility. And there are five sub clauses. Schedule 6 also lists out the CSR activities. And I think let us look at it one by one. No? What 135 talks about. It says uh, that every company registered under the company, that, uh, company law or any previous laws with network of 500 crores or more, turnover of 1000 crore or more, and net profit of rupees 5 crore or more during any financial year has to actually comply with the CSR requirements. So sometimes the network may be a challenge, 500 crores of course is a huge number. Turnover also sometimes, but I'm sure there will be a lot of companies uh, with a profit of 5 crores. So here comes the role of company secretary to educate and try and ensure the compliance of CSR. And let me, let me once again tell my fellow uh, colleagues, don't let this opportunity go to HR department of your company. Don't let this work go to any other section uh, of the organization. We as C company secretary should be professing CSR and we should be on top of it. Now, the threshold spend is 2% of the net profit on corporate social responsibility and that is net average, average net profit made during the three immediately preceding financial years now, this is something uh, we, we can spend as a city for CSR activity. 
There is also a provision of forming a CSR committee. We must uh, have a committee to monitor and plan what kind of CSR activities we have to do and how we have to carry that forward. Now, CSR committee company has to con uh, constitute uh, as a committee of the board. The members should be three or more directors. So this is again uh, something apart from the other committees. We have to ensure wherever the applicability of the uh, this law is there to actually uh, form this committee. And at least one committee member has to be independent director. That is again something very important. Uh, so uh, you have to actually involve the independent directors into the CSR activity, but I suggest that there should be more. Rather, it should all be independent directors so that the CSR activity can be done in a more robust manner. We, we should involve more and more independent directors. That's my personal view in the CSR committee. Now, the policy shall indicate the activities which are already specified in Schedule 7. I'll come to that. The committee will recommend the amount of expansion which can be incurred on the activity and then monitor the policy uh, of the company from time to time. And on this, this committee has to report to board of directors. And the role of the board of directors is to review the recommendation made by the CSR committee, then approve the CSR policy of the company, and of course disclose the content of the policy in the company's report and put it on the website, and shall ensure that the company spends at least 2% of everything at profit. Uh, this is going to be a mandatory requirement, and all of us must ensure that there is no non-compliance. Now let us see what Schedule 7 talks about. This is long and if you actually read it, sometimes you feel that, you know, this is something which is, uh, actually it has come out of the, uh, you know, uh, international uh, CSR policies followed by other countries. And it talks about eradicating extreme hunger and poverty promotion of education, promoting gender equality and empowering women, reducing child mortality, combating human uh, you know, deficiency and blah blah, a lot of things, ensuring environmental sustainability. Now here lies the opportunity. There is a concept of sustainability reporting, which is catching up in all companies, good companies, and companies on their own are also going for sustainability reporting. So let us become the professionals who are experts in sustainability reporting. So here is the opportunity for company secretary within the organization as well as the company secretary in practice to actually try and get into this area of sustainability reporting and ultimately this is going to be a huge business opportunity for all of us. Then employment enhancing um, and vocational skills, social business projects, of course the Prime Minister Fund and all, and such other things. So let us move to what are these disclosures. I'm told the time is limited, so I'm kind of rushing you through. Of course the provisions are uh, long. One, the company needs to di disclose in the annual report about uh, the composition of CSR committee and CSR policy and initiatives. So this is going to be integral part of the report, annual report of the company. Amount of expenditure incurred has to be also shared in that report. So all of us must be careful uh, in handling this aspect. Then valid reasons in case of failure to spend EM EMR CSR budget also has to be given. So it's not that you simply allocate fund and you forget spending it. If you forget spending it, you have to actually explain as to why that allocated budget was not 
spend on CSR activity. Now, I think uh, this is my again a very personal view that CSR should not be looked upon as uh, activity which is kind of forcibly imposed on us, the corporates. It is actually an opportunity that the companies who are not doing this activity, I'm sure a lot of companies are doing already, those who are not doing it, it is an opportunity for them to get connected. And we should, as a professional, guide the management that this is the way to connect with your customers, this is the way to connect with the community, this is the way to connect with the environment around you, and this is the way you can actually contribute back to the society what we are uh, we have been given by the society because ultimately profit comes from where profit comes from society profit comes from the customer and if we are getting profit from them we must give back something to them i move to the next discussion of our independent director I think uh, all of us are aware about what independent director is. But let me ask you something. Why, why this concept of independent director? Why it was thought in the corporate circle that we must have independent directors working for the organization? Because there tend to be some kind of a bias when you our owner or you are actually uh, having equity stake in the organization, not in all organizations. But despite independent directors, such them happen. Despite having independent directors, still the exact norms of the corporate uh, world are sometimes you know, not followed. And I was, you know, discussing with you when we were there only that with the kind of penalties which are coming and the kind of responsibility which is there on the professionals now in the new uh, company that it's going to be very tough for the professionals to actually deliver. <coughs> So independent director is going to be the best friend of the professional. Don't you think so? Because if the organization is trying to do something which is not actually compliant with the law of the land and which is now responsibility going beyond the company's company law, I think the the support which you can get from independent directors can be immense. And as since morning we are talking about that our role is now going to be of a whistle blower. Now if we are going to be a whistle blower, then the, the connect with the independent director of the whistle blower has to be good, right? So independent directors are actually uh, the guys who are going to support the, uh, the professionals uh, in their uh, execution of the job. Now one, they are non-executive directors, they don't receive remuneration, I think all of us are aware so I don't have to touch upon this and clause 49 uh, gives the definition. So, doesn't have pecuniary relationship with the company, its promoter, senior management, or affiliate companies. I think all of us are aware. Not related to promoter or senior management. Most of the time, some indirect relation we find, okay, somewhere we have to actually guide and advise the management uh, as to who can be independent director. Not to be an executive of the company. Uh, in the immediately three preceding financial years, not a partner or executive of the auditor, lawyer, consultant for the last three years. Again, this is very important. 
von deinem äh, wie dann sagt er, sie kann nicht mehr über den Tarek kommen. So, der Peter Lyuk, der, der kann die Frage an die Credibility of such independent director, not a supplier or a service provider, and does not hold 2% of more shares in the company. So I think that is very clear. Now, when we talk about the role, uh, I think quickly I'll run you through. One, they are uh, part of the audit committee, and uh, two-thirds should be independent directors in the audit committee, all of us are aware. And of course, there are a couple of other things which uh, I think I don't have to dwell upon in detail. We, we all are aware about what role independent director has. But let me tell you, in my uh, company, our audit committee chairman actually deals directly with the auditors. When he talks to the auditors, there is no interface of, uh, you know, and sometimes even now auditors uh, like to have a separate interview with the independent directors to ensure that they have that given independence about uh, expressing their views about the company, expressing honestly what uh, you know the company is doing, and if they have any views which are contrary to the management, they can express that very clearly. Uh, 